We must also reject the notion that the nation so construed confers eugenic benefits. Eugenics is a dirty word these days, and for good reason, but when some on the right, say, argue that financial aid to black communities should be slashed because the upper limits of their achievements are already predetermined by their genetic heritage, they are making an argument on the grounds of a eugenic principle, i.e., the better genes should be promoted over the worse. There are myriad reasons why this line of justification fails, but I'll go over three. First, as we've already seen, the concepts of nation-race and their unholy synthesis in the concept of the nation-state are recent contingencies not even 300 years old. The lines drawn between nations will never correspond to innate capacities or characteristics of groups, but rather to the historical situations of populations and classes over a very short time frame so that the delineation between groups within a state, even when it evokes such intuitively obvious features as differences in skin tone, will always be arbitrarily based on historically contingent criteria. There is nothing to commend a race-based analysis over a class-based one among numerous other possible modes of classification. Second, the data on outcome disparities between these arbitrarily delineated groups within society is hopelessly fraught with conceptual and empirical difficulties. To say nothing of the glut of pseudoscientific literature that has emerged in defense of eugenics-minded policy proposals, such as incentivizing sterilization for women who score low on IQ tests, or the slashing of benefits for underperforming demographics in favor of rerouting funds to the best performing, as callous and arbitrarily classist a policy as one could suggest. Here, racial disparities in IQ test results have enjoyed the spotlight for some time, but it's possibly the most fraught of all. Even among respectable and honest scholars, there is simply no consensus on what intelligence is, and what definitions are given are extremely vague. But it gets worse than that. Even assuming we had a firmly settled concept of intelligence to work with, we have no way of determining how much of such a complex thing as intelligence is inherited and how much should be imputed to the environment. But again, it gets worse because even determining to a certainty that intelligence is purely inherited doesn't mean that it's inherited genetically. Social and economic conditions also propagate from one generation to the next. But it gets even worse, because even if we knew for a certain fact that intelligence was purely a genetic inheritance, that fact alone would in no way tell us how mutable that intelligence is by environmental factors like education, nutrition, medicine, etc. Because inherited doesn't mean fixed. And yet, it still gets even worse. Because even if we proved that one's intellectual capacities were purely a genetic inheritance and inflexible after birth, this would not establish that improving the nutrition and well-being of one generation might not incur benefits on those following so that a purely inherited and generationally fixed level of intelligence might not nevertheless rise incrementally with each generation as a result of environmental factors. And lest we forget, we were only able to get to this point by making the false assumption that we even know what intelligence is in the first place. The amount of credulity it would require to take us there would, if we were consistent, have us believing in fairies long in advance. So defenses of nationalism on the grounds of eugenics, effectively, are bunk. And thirdly, even the pragmatic use of methodological nationalism by scholars of, say, international relations, ultimately confers nothing but a baked-in blindness to adjacent modes of association and power that render any purely nationalistic theory misleading at best. The nation doesn't dominate at any level of analysis, in fact, and any theory which assigns it a special status as anything more than a recent and transient historical contingency is a theory with no real scientific value. 